What's up guys, it's Mike with Alpha Reptile, back with another video today. Today, we have a few friends in the car with us. We are planning a road trip to go get some incredible new reptiles. Well, I guess technically they're amphibious. Well, there's a new reptile for there you, is but a reptile. new herps for everybody, minus Alec in the back here. He's uh, he's here for the plants. I think he's made a few appearances in your videos yes. as uh, Dr. Alec Brown. Yeah, if you guys want to check out Alex's whole setup, uh, he breeds Ligodactylus Williams eye. Also, I guess Ufaga now. And uh, there's some big plans in the works that I'm also a part of coming very soon. Uh, you can check it out on me. on <laughs> you can check it out on Dion's channel. Let's get on with the road trip, picking up some awesome reptiles and amphibians. Let's go! Woo! Guys, we are here at Savannah and Adam's house. We're here to pick up some very special frogs that are very seldom seen in the reptile hobby. These are the Cruzio Hylocraspidopus, otherwise known as the fringed leaf frogs. These guys are found throughout mostly like Ecuador and the very tropical Amazon rainforest. They are a fantastically rare species of frog in the hobby. I think it's safe to say that Savannah and Adam are the only ones in Canada to have produced these guys regularly several times in captivity in Canada. Something that's very interesting you might notice is that it's not a sterile habitat. There's a large debate that goes on constantly with tree frogs and leaf frogs alike that it has to be sterile for them to produce. You put them in a rain chamber and they do their thing. As our conversation with Savannah proves that this clearly works. A habitat that is well set up, that is lush with growth. I'm very happy to share these beautiful frogs with you all and I'll be bringing home some of the juveniles in here. If you guys are interested in seeing Savannah's other reptiles, make sure you stay to the end of this video because there are some shelled cuties as well as some fish hunting monkey tails. Make sure you stick around. Producing Cruzio Hyla is no easy feat. With that said though, it seemed like it was pretty easy for Savannah. How did you end up getting your first Cruzio Hyla in the first place? We like saw them listed online and we like drove for two hours to get them. This chance only comes around once in a blue moon. So we just decided to bite the bullet and get two. We bought them thinking that they were two males so that we would never get any babies. But like, you know, had high hopes that maybe one day we'd get a female and eventually breed them. So many people have the dream of breeding these incredible frogs, myself included. And that's why I'm showing you guys this video. If you set them up properly, Properly, it seems like they just breed on their own. Listen to what Savannah has to say about it. And then just one day we just heard them calling and then all of a sudden they were humping. <laughs> and um, <laughs> they laid eggs one day. My boyfriend was taking a video. He's like, Savannah, you're not gonna believe this. And he sent it to me where I was. And he's like, they just laid eggs. The fringes laid eggs. And then they like hatched into tadpoles. And then I was like, okay. Every month for about five months, they were laying a clutch of between like 13 and 20 eggs, and it was pretty intense. We had a lot of tadpoles and a lot of froglets that we were trying to get rid of. We just wanted this to stop. As much of a blessing as it was, it needed to end because that was too many beautiful frogs and we just did not have the capacity to take care of them. Imagine having your first breeding of these frogs be so successful that you need to figure out why they are breeding so much so you can stop them. What a wonderful problem to have. So what was Savannah able to conclude and what was the secret to their breeding? We realized that because we had a water pump in there that was flowing water over the plants that are in the enclosure, it ended up being stimulating, yeah, for their reproductive cycle. And then I ended up reading more about that and that's like a bit of a stressful situation. So immediately we turned the pump off and they didn't lay eggs. That's some strong evidence to support that the pump is really the critical part that leads them to laying eggs. You might think to yourself, oh, well, that's just one of the several factors that could go into it. Well, let her provide some evidence as to the critical nature of the pump in their breeding. I plugged the pump in for like, half a day when I was working and then it was getting annoying so I unplugged it and then like clockwork at the end of the day at night when I looked in the water they were making babies and they laid another clutch. The pump has not been on since. So yeah I suppose you could say that the pump is definitely one of the critical parts in breeding of this species but what about keeping? We really wanted to get some information from Savannah about keeping the froglets as well as the tadpoles. She relayed to us that the tadpoles are pretty bulletproof and will eat just about anything you put in there. She is feeding them a consistent diet of various different kinds of fish food. I'm personally feeding my tadpoles the rapashi 
soiling green and it doesn't make the water quite as messy as some of the different fish flakes out there. She also brought up the point of raising tadpoles communally and she found that even keeping them in fairly small containers there didn't seem to be much of an issue with overcrowding or predation like one tadpole eating any of the others. Unlike the tadpoles the froglets tend to be a little bit more finicky and need a little bit more specific care. Here we are next to the frog gorilla. This is just a 12 by 12 by 24 fairly simplistic setup albeit it is very naturalistic packed with live plants and a nice cork tube. The froglets in here are fresh morph out so they're anywhere from a few days old to a few months old. They stick towards the top of the tank throughout the day and then towards the nighttime they end up venturing around. As the Cruzio Hyla genus in general is a canopy dwelling tree frog. Again this is kind of an attestament to that. With that being said it all came down to one point. We've kept all their enclosures really bioactive. It's honestly the more sterile we've tried to make their enclosure the worse that they've done. They're more like immunocompromised. The more more biodiverse the better, I would say. That'd be my only advice. I want to thank Savannah so much for not only allowing us to come into her home, but also put her on spot and film how she takes care of her animals. Now that you've seen that, let's pack up these frogs. And Happy boy over here with his frogs. Mm -hmm and head downstairs where I found myself in a relatively spacious redfoot enclosure. This is crazy. Heat panel up here. I'm in the tortoise pen. <laughs> Nuts. I can honestly say that this is one of the most interesting setups that I've ever seen for any tortoise, let alone redfoots. It was a gorgeous homemade room essentially in their basement filled with live tropical plants that were overwintering. I suppose it's not every day that you are chasing a herd of redfoots around the basement. After they slowed down and we made some friends, Savannah ended up taking us up to the main floor to check out a monkey-tailed skink enclosure unlike anything else I've ever seen. It was set up as a paludarium, something I had not even considered for monkey-tailed skinks. After throwing some fish in the bottom on her security camera, she caught the skinks going down to the water section and hunting those fish. We don't have actual video of it, but that would be one heck of a cool documentation and something that might need to be looked into in the future. So I am covered in mud and scuffs. I, uh, I took a big tumble on the way home, messed up my shoulder, but we are here uh, with the beautiful Cruzio Hyla that we picked up from Savannah and Adam. And the tank that we'll be putting them in is just down here. It is a very simple setup, kind of based off what they said. Just some water in the bottom, a simple piece of driftwood, and then some cuttings of some aeroids that will hopefully grow and take over the tank. So let's put them in there. First up is the tadpoles. We're just putting their whole tadpole tea and everything in there. And next up we have the frogs themselves. And that wraps up the video, you guys. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed us going to Savannah's, chatting to her about how she produced these amazing frogs and enjoyed some of the crazy reptiles that she has along the way. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment section down below and we'll catch you in the next video. Later.